The limestone cliffs and sandy beaches dotting Normandy, France, are more peaceful today compared to a lifetime ago. Here on June 6, 1944, D-Day forever altered five years of World War II that disrupted and destroyed the lives of millions of people in France and far beyond. Allied naval forces began landing Allied armies this morning on the northern coast of France. On Omaha Beach, 2,400 U.S. Army 1st Infantry troops were killed, wounded, or went missing in the first wave of soldiers to attack the German gunners. They are among 9,300 Americans buried on the bluffs above Omaha Beach who died on D-Day and in the Battle of Normandy. Farther inland, U.S. Army airborne troops had their share of chaos on D-Day, too. These are the first ships to take off in the airborne invasion of Fortress Europe. Hours before the Allies' amphibious invasion, 13,000 American airborne troops flew in darkness from England to parachute and land troop gliders behind enemy lines in Normandy. Ready with the green. Show the green. Go! Among them was Omaha, Nebraska-born Robert Rubin. He was 25 years old and witnessing combat for the first time in his life, not as a soldier, but as a Reuters News war correspondent. A lot of the estimates said 90% glider crews not gonna make it. Three out of four paratroopers not gonna survive. They're not gonna survive the drop. If they survived, the U.S. Airborne's mission was to attack German troops from the rear with their British and Canadian counterparts. Robert Rubin parachuted with them. Suddenly, I was conscious of a violent swinging of the plane, evasive action. 500 feet above the ground, Rubin's C-47 transport plane was the first to reach its Normandy drop zone, and that's where Rubin made his first combat jump. We were being shot at. Enemy planes or flak? Even machine guns could reach us. We were flying so low. You are in the belly of the beast. I mean, you're jumping into uh, a hot zone at night. I have no recollection of going through the door at all. I began to shuffle forward. A burst of flak, a ball of red fire beside the plane, and I was hurtling down in the propeller blast. Almost the next thing, I felt the jolt of my chute opening. Looking up, Reuben wasn't sure what to expect. He was the first war correspondent to land in Normandy. For months to come, he chronicled the U.S. soldiers fighting and dying in Europe. How did they die? Machine guns, artillery, snipers? But what difference does it make to the dead? Are they dust, no life left, or does life go on? What is the mystery, the soul, the breath of life? All I can tell you is how they died. Machine guns, artillery, snipers. Most people run from the fire of war. Robert Rubin ran towards it. You must carry the burden alone, and never can you share it or relive it or explain it to someone who has lived it. A typewritten manuscript wrapped in cellophane, never published. It sat in the archives of the global news agency Reuters ever since its author, Robert Rubin, died in 1964. Rubin was the son of Jewish immigrants who escaped religious persecution in Eastern Europe. He was born in Nebraska and grew up in Fort Dodge, Iowa. He graduated from college in 1939, the year that Nazi Germany invaded Poland and World War II began. Five years later, 
just months before the Allies' D-Day invasion, Reuben, a Reuters war correspondent, stood in awe on the British airfield, watching U.S. Army airborne troops stage a parachute demonstration for British Prime Minister Winston Churchill and U.S. General Dwight D. Eisenhower. 